So in that most recent example in the last subsection, we saw that all the states in one communicating class were recurrent, and all the, all the states in another communicating class were transient. So within a communicating class, everything had the same recurrence or transient property. And that's not a coincidence. It turns out that that is a theorem. So here is that theorem. It says that within a communicating class, either every state is transient or every state is recurrent, which means we don't have to look at each state individually. We just look at the classes. Uh, note that the second sentence there is just saying that same thing a bit more carefully. It says, if I communicates with J, which means that I and J are in the same communicating class, then if I is recurrent, then J is recurrent. Whilst if I is transient, then J is transient. That's the same way of saying that if you've got two states in the same class, they have the same transience or recurrence. So before we were talking about transient and recurrent states, if we know that everything in the same class has the, the same one of those two properties, we can call the whole, whole class a transient communicating class or a recurrent communicating class, which means that's a class in which every single state is transient, or that's a class in which every single state is recurrent. Similarly, if we happen to have an irreducible Markov chain, you, might, you should remember the definition of irreducible from a previous section, section 7, I think. Irreducible meant everything was the same communicating class. So in an irreducible Markov chain, either every state is transient or every state is recurrent. We can call it a, a transient Markov chain, or we can call it a recurrent Markov chain. Obviously, that, that doesn't make sense if it's not irreducible, because it may be that some of the states are transient and some of the states are recurrent. But if it's irreducible, then they're either all transient or all recurrent. So for an irreducible chain, we can call it a transient Markov chain or a recurrent Markov chain. There's a second uh, theorem here, which will make life much easier for us when we're trying to tell whether things are transient or recurrent, which is these two facts. Every non-closed communicating class is transient. Remember, non-closed means you can get out of the class. And every finite closed communicating class is recurrent. So finite just means it has a finite number of states in it, so not like the random walk, for example. And closed, remember, meant that once you're in the class, you can't get out. So note that this almost completely solves it for us. There's only the question about... Uh, infinite closed classes. Infinite closed classes can be either. So if you're ever unlucky enough that you find yourself faced with an infinite closed class, then you might actually have to do some work. But you don't see those very often. You normally see finite, closed, or non-closed classes, in which case you can tell straight away, dead easily, whether they're recurrent or transient. Let's go back to an example from the previous subsection, this one here, where we said that we had two communicating classes. Obviously, this communicating class over here is closed, right? Because once we go into it, we can't get out. So we can just say straight away, oh, all those states are recurrent because it's a finite co closed class. Finite because it only has three states in it, and three is indeed a finite number. Whereas this communicating class over here it's not closed because you can get out of it. So we can just say straight away, oh, it's a non-closed communicating class, it's transient. We don't actually have to do any work. It's dead easy to tell. So that theorem there will make it really easy for us most of the time to tell whether a class is transient or recurrent.